Today we're going to have a look at how to use the Profile Manager. So in order to do this, uh, and also how to make an object, we're going to use a, a Bunnings Pot. So I've quickly copied this screenshot of this uh, off the Bunnings catalog online, and I needed to measure it up, so I've reduced the scale of it down so it's to scale. How have I figured out it's to scale? Hopefully it's 55 by 38 centimeters. And of course there's a bit of perspective. Uh, the, the view's not quite out, but it's not too bad. So the next thing that I'm going to do is try to draw this pot up, assuming that it's got a flat base, assuming that it's got a, a flat top. But I need to produce the, the curve on this side. So I'm going to use, or at least I'm going to start with, my spline tool. Let's just keep it red just to keep everything simple. And I'm going to try to join up roughly this shape. It's always going to happen like that. That doesn't quite work the way you want it to. Alright, that looks pretty good. Effectively, what I'm trying to draw is half of this pot. These are just my working lines, so I can delete these working lines now. Pick up the settings of this line before I delete it. Delete, 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 and I'm going to keep this line just because it's important. This is my center line. Now, I'm working at such a large scale that's not going to look correct, so let's just change this quickly to 1 to 10. There we go, so we can now see this as a center line. And I need to give this pot a bit of a thickness. So let's add that line back again. And we can assume that the pot's going to be, I could measure it off here if I wanted to, don't know how accurate it will be, but I can give it a go. Let's say it's about 25 mil. it doesn't really matter for the point of this exercise. And we're going to define the, the baseline as well and that will go all the way because we're making a mirrored object. Now in order to get a, a copy of this, uh, we're going to use the offset tool. Now when we're using a spline, we can't actually use the spline to get the offset. So we either have to use a line or a arc to offset a spline. So to offset it, I want to select my line. In this case, I want to select the spline itself as well, otherwise I'll offset all three elements. And I'm going to select my offset tool which is this one here, looks like the two Z's spacebar to get my magic wand, click let's try that again, why didn't that work, offset here we go and I'm going to define it with that same distance so I'll type in D for distance, 25, enter now this is going to make this line into lots of different arcs because effectively we can't offset a spline because it's irregular and so what we're doing instead is creating a number of regular arcs. Now I need to try to join these up and that's not going to work all that nice, that's fine and I can change these settings as I need to just to be able to stretch this and connect it. And I don't want to offset this all the way to the bottom, I want to offset this line now so I'll do the same thing, offsetting a line is a lot easier, R25, hopefully it's the same and there we go. Now, I need a trim. I can't trim while these are grouped. If I try to trim this line while there's multiples here, let's give a look at that. Command doesn't like it. It won't work. What we need to do is always make sure that we deselect or, what's the word? Suspend grouping while we do this. So let's try that again. Now we're going to trim and now it will work perfectly. Now we're keeping this line. We're keeping this middle line, but I'm just going to shorten it because I want to close off this shape. Now we have a two-dimensional shape and to make sure that it's closed I could fill it with a fill. Here we go. And now I have, in terms of a two-dimensional representation, half of my pot. To explain what I'm doing, if you're a little bit lost, all I'd need to do Sorry, I've lost some of my tools. There we go. All I'd need to do is mirror a copy of this. And here we'd see our pot. And that pot would now be complete, again, in 2D, or a section of this pot. 
And this is the most important thing about trying to use the profile manager or in fact trying to make an object that you need to break down a complex, in this case it's not very complex, but a complex three-dimensional object into its most simple two-dimensional aspects. Now, we've got this field, that's all I need to make a profile for the profile manager. I'm going to copy this, command C. Now I'm going to go into options, element attributes and profile manager. Under profile manager, you can see here all of my existing profiles. That's just ones that I've made in the past. I'm going to make up a new one now, so I'm going to go to edit profile. And I'm going to paste in this case command V, center of current view, that fill into this view. So here is my fill. Now I could have drawn this fill in the profile manager but often I find it's easier to draw in our model space or on our plan and then we can import that into this profile manager editor. Now this origin point here is really really important. When we're drawing uh, floor plan for instance, we don't really need to pay a lot of attention to this origin but when we're making a profile we do because this is the insertion point. So in this case I want the middle and bottom of my pot or my shape, my profile to line up with that origin point point. and now that's all I need to do. I could make it more complicated but I don't need to. I could make more shapes, I could flute it more but again I don't really need to. Now what am I going to use this for? Am I going to use this for a wall, for a beam, or for a column? I don't know, I could use it for everything, but realistically it's probably only going to be useful as a beam or a wall, so I'll keep both of those options. Now I don't really need to at the moment um, be able to stretch this, although if I wanted to I could always add that function I don't really need to stretch it vertically so I won't worry about that too much. Now I'm going to press store and I can now add the name of what I want to do. Now I'm going to use this pot as a rain chain water collector so therefore I'll call it that. Now this isn't massively again important when I'm only talking about one small object but when I've got multiple objects it really matters what I do with this. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to choose what building material this is made out of because the building material can change the finish that I will get. So in this case what do I want? Let's go with slate. Now the fact that it's blue doesn't really matter, that's not really important for what I'm doing. I can come back to that later if, and change that if I'm not happy with the result that I'm getting. So once we're happy with that, it's already stored, it's already saved. I can press store again and that'll update the changes that I've made. I can now close my profile manager. So to be able to access or use that profile manager, I now either have to go to my wall or to my beam. In this case, I think I'm going to use it as a wall. I find it a bit easier to use sometimes. Let's go into the wall tool. Now when I go into my wall tool I've got the basic, I've got my composite and I've got my complex profile. The complex profile gives me access to my profile manager or my complex profiles. Here we see <coughs> that it's not the full list is it? It's only the ones that were allowed to be used for the purposes of creating a wall. I'm not going to change the heights or anything here because that's defined based on what I'm doing. And we can see here that it's currently only allowing me to change the cut surface because the outside and inside is already defined by the fact that I am using a complex profile. So I don't really want that to be brick old. What do I want it to be? I don't really care because I'm not going to see it, but I could call it concrete because that's probably what this pot's made from. Great. Now. If I was to draw this in a straight line, like a regular wall, and have a look at it in 3D, this is the result that I'd get. I'd get a three-dimensional extrusion of my shape. Now that's interesting, but it's not a pot, because instead of extruding in a straight line, I need to extrude around a curve. Let's try that again. This might be a bit difficult because I made the center the origin, but let's find out how we go. So instead of doing that, 
I'm going to change to my curved wall. All right. I'm going to have to add here a very small radius. Let's add one. I'm going to define that around 360 degrees. And I did that backwards. Let's try that again. <laughs> Horrible. Walto, please. Just for now, let's keep this as. One eighty degrees. Okay. I think I'm making this inside out, which is why it's doing something rather silly. There we go. That looks a bit wrong, doesn't it? Let's go back and fix that up. Let's flip it around. Now I really, to make this work better, I'm going to go into my profile manager. This is getting difficult as I considered it might because I'm trying to make this inside out. So let's just go back to my profile manager, brain chain pot, edit profile, and I'm going to move my object to its outer limits. Store profile, please. All right. Let's try this again. Still inside out. Can we flip it around, please? There we go. Haha, -ha, finally success. Now that I've got this made, let's redo this for you. Select half of this first. Yep. And now let's like, select the whole thing. So effectively what we've done is extrude that two-dimensional shape around a three-dimensional curve and now we have a complete pot with a very very small hole in the top of it. Now next video I'm going to show you how to do the same thing but instead of using the profile manager which of course we can use for a lot of different things I'm now going to show you how to do this using the morph tool or the shell tool.